You mean over the 20 years that we've been yeah, working, yeah. Uh, well, we, I mean, Coyle started out when I was young <laughs> and in, in, a, in a city. Uh, so all my anger from unrepressed sort of uh, energies and stuff that my, my parents had pushed down suddenly exploded and it was a good time to be in London. We had friends like Anstutz and Neubauten and Soft Cell were really good friends and there was a good scene, very good scene, very creative scene. And Current 93 came out of this and uh, Nurse with Wound came out of this. And Derek Jarman was working and filmmakers like Kerith Wynne Evans and John Mabry and uh, Michael Kossif and, uh, and uh, Michael Clark dance people you know all, all together you know and, and uh, Lee Bowery had arrived from Australia you know so there was many many uh, people who were young and fresh and interested and interesting and together it, along with the drugs and the drink and the city and the noise all became I suppose a sort of new equivalent of Dadaism uh, I think these things happen from time to time if all all these things come together and there's a big vortex of energy. It happened with punk uh, before you know commerciality set in with punk. This time it didn't set in so fast, and people were, people were allowed to develop, which is why Nurse with Wound and Current Ninety Three and Coil and so on are still working now. Uh, we we've been allowed to mature in the dark, whereas most groups or bands you know, immediately in the light, in the spotlight, and in the papers everywhere, and it's like, you are the best, you are the best, next one, now you are rubbish, you know. We've, we've, we've never had rubbish or best. There's always been a small amount of people slowly discovering us, and over the years, they stay with us. I think this is quite different for a lot of bands. Our uh, following or our friends, our circle of friends gets bigger and bigger and the people we work with and so on. And we explore new music every time. It's so you were allowed to be yourself. <coughs> Absolutely, to yeah. Your natural evolution and yeah. to, to follow a standardization from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, we've never, apart from people, I mean, some bizarre turned into a complete nightmare because despite the fact we had no papers signed and no contracts and a promise that we could always walk away we always assumed this would be walking away with our, with our own material, but they had different ideas. So this is the only problem we've had, really, in, in uh, the whole of our career. Uh, and it was a huge setback because the money was withheld from us. So, but again, I, I see it as a good thing because, again, we were kept low in profile and allowed to develop on our own. Some, somebody else may have you know, seduced us with money. Probably not but may have done, you know, so. But so we're very happy to be, you know, doing what we're doing now. It's, it's, a, it's a great privilege, you know. It's, it's good not to, not to have to support everyone with your, you know, with the work that you do. We support ourselves and our fantasies and our um, explorations financially, but we don't have any company who, who is depending on us for survival. And so there is no absolutely no pressure. If we want to do a record like Time Machines, which is totally different from anything that was ever done before, including by us, then uh, we can do that, and you know, and and people are amazed because it's, it is something that's totally new that would never have been made by a commercial record company. Do you think the market changed? In the It's always changing, you know, and people are always... No, but I mean, uh, the, the, the fact is that the independent, the independent scene w became so, so, so big and so important, uh, uh, changed the, the attitude of commercial. Do you think... I, but, uh, I mean, you use the word independent. I, I, I think it's dependent. It's not independent. They are dependent. Even bands who say they're independent, like Rage Against the Machine or System of a Down or... Anyone who's signed to a major label is dependent on that major label to keep their profile. And they have sold their soul to the devil, you know, the commercial. And we will never do this. We have never done this. Bands like Crass never did this. They had their day. They finished because they wanted to finish. Then they had 
said what they wanted to say, we still have a lot to say. This is my life's work. You know, I am. I, I, this, I, I can't do anything else. I can only do what I do. So it's my life's work, and so I will never sell to anybody else. So the, what you call the in, independent, or what people call the independent music uh, genre, is really it's it's a copy, or well, it's something that the major labels made when they f suddenly realized that independent groups and companies were coming up. They decided to make a genre of what they did. Like they decided to call it independent, especially in the USA. But in all the, the only reason that they did that was to undermine the ability of truly independent people from reaching the you know the mass market. But the tr you know it, the, the whole phrase independent. I mean, we're all dependent on, on each other, depending on who you know what level we work at. I, I couldn't do what. I do, or what Coyle do, unless I was working with Peter and with Simon and with uh, Cliff and uh, Michael, Mike now, you know, who we, and also the other people who support us, you know, it's, it's and, and with David Tibet, you know, I bounce ideas off him and if, if any of us sort of disappear, then there's a huge hole in our life. You know, we, we've been friends with these people, Steve Stapleton and David Tibet and such, and people in America, the butthole surfers and things. And it goes quiet from time to time, but it comes up again. It's because longevity is so important. And as our phrase says, persistence is all. You have to keep going. As I say, I can't do anything else. So I'd rather, I'd, I'd rather be dead you know, than not create in any way. You know. I think it's um, essential creatively to keep all your paths open to kind of to be like shapeshifters almost, mm, you know, absolutely, not, yeah. not to kind of just stay still on one idea and not ever deviate from it. Um, it kind of what it, it keeps it exciting for for us to to remain open and to and it also allows allows the possibility of surprise for ourselves as well, so we can actually grow with it. Uh, the, the, the 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 sort of idea of uh, receiving and being a transmitter and a receiver. Is, is what the artist has to do. You must always keep all your channels open. It's like, you know, SETI, the search for intelligent you know, uh, life, uh, extraterrestrial life. You, you must keep all the sky open, listen to all the sky, just for that one signal. And it's like, you know, things, Pasolini films or something have influenced us so strongly, you know, not necessarily music, and then Ave Pert or someone or the cramps, you know, the early cramps for me was wonderful. And I, I, when we do the music you hear tonight, which is, you know, mi traditional music mixed with extreme electronics and all sorts, uh, I still think of the cramps in my head and I think Arvo Pert and I think, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I constantly have in my heart a whole reservoir of these older templates, these, you know, people who went before us. I bear them in mind and I use their strength to do what we do. Uh, can you talk about your experience with the uh, uh, German for the music for Blue and, mm -hmm. and the, the Angelic Conversation? Yeah, I mean, we... we Peter originally... Go on, so you say you're... Okay. P Peter was originally, you know, in Throbbing Gristle and Derek Jarman and Throbbing Gristle collaborated several times uh, on uh, Psychic Rally in Heaven, short film, and uh, In the Shadow of the Sun, which is a longer film, yeah. Uh, and Genesis and Peter knew him then. So uh, when I moved down to London and became a member of Psychic Television, I, I used to see him uh, on the gay scene, but I used to go, he used to live on the Charing Cross Road in a flat, and every time i go into town, I'd pop up and see him. And every time he'd go there, there'd be new people, you know, there'd be uh, dancers, they choreographed, uh, uh, what's that Wolves program? I mean, there'd be, you know, choreog yeah, come the company of Wolves, yeah. Uh, and Toya and Brian Eno. And, and it was, it, his room was a very small room, like a cell, like a monk's cell, lined with books and pictures and things. Uh, and he was a really good friend, you know. I used, 
you know, we had sex in back rooms with him and I would be in back rooms watching him have sex with others and he'd say, be careful, and I'd say, be careful to him. And it was sort of... Uh, and we had interest in magic as well. He gave me one of my first original Austin Osmond spare magical books. You know, it was a present from Derek. Uh, and what do you mean by a magical book? By mag like a grimoire, you know, original, a proper occult grimoire. Mm -hmm. He was interested. Is there is. I don't go into this area. No, no. Multicolored. Multicolored. <laughs> yes. Rainbow. <laughs> no, not right. Well, maybe. No, not rainbow. No, but multicolored. <laughs> yeah. yeah, every color. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we had a great interest in magic together. And John D. and the Enochian magic, which is a sort of uh, talking to the angels through scrying mirrors, and so many themes together. But also, and Pasolini interest as well. But he was a really good friend, as I say, and we always wanted to work with him, but he had Simon Fisher Turner working with him for quite a lot and we we didn't we, we sort of stepped back a little bit, you know, and rather we rather saw him socially than be involved in some of the major films. And then the chance came for us to work on the Angelic Conversation and Derek we asked him for a film. Instead of doing a video for music we had already made, we said, would you make a film and we will do the soundtrack. So it was a very much a, a, a sort of unique kind of collaboration. Uh, and so he did a, a version. In fact, he filmed some in Bologna here. And we didn't like it. We said, this is OK, Derek, but this is like many of your Super 8 films. You know, we've, we've seen this. Do something good. Do something. Push it much further. So he went, oh, OK. Not many people say this to me, but you know, I'll do it. And he he went away and involved the Shakespeare sonnets, and I and two of the lovers I had at the time, uh, Paul and Philip, who were, who were the lovers in the film, you know, they were they were my lovers for a short time. So there was this sort of intimate connection, which makes it an intimate film. And then with Blue, it was it was very sad. I mean, he was very ill many many times with AIDS related illnesses uh, and many times we thought he was he was dying uh, but he had this incredible clinging to this urge to cling to life and to continue creating to be in his presence was amazing you you would be energized you'd get I mean he was lying on the flo floor of his room on a mattress blind you know covered in skin problems and breathing badly just come out of hospital for a big operation and you'd go and see him and somehow this saintly power would pass through him and, and you'd come away like, wow, this is, you know, I feel like I've had a major drug. I feel amazing. And Derek always had that power. And he always had this power to get people around him to work together. It was wonderful to know him. And my sort of lasting memory was when we played him the disco hospital piece that we did for Blue. He was he would he cut out of his chair with his stick and was dancing around blind. So oh, this is brilliant, this is my favourite piece of music. And then, so. I wish but I do wish we'd work much more with him. We worked on ideas, you know, we're always developing stories about how he wanted there was a murder story we were gonna do with him, how he was killed while writing a film script in his flat in the sort of Pasolini style by a rent boy or something. So it would be a murder mystery with Derek as the victim. And he had a sort of strange sexual attraction to this fantasy, so. <laughs> uh, what, what do you think about your public? <coughs> uh, uh, audience. Uh, audience, yeah. Uh, at first, uh, um, uh, you, you were consider, uh, considered as a, as a uh, musician for uh, collectors, uh, for a hmm. special kind yeah. of public. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a, a special cultural I know what you mean, yeah, yeah. Is this a change? It's difficult because we, I don't really know. <laughs> we are collectors. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two days ago, I was downloading from the internet uh, mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the Time Machine. Time Machine, uh -huh, the yeah. MP3. And the, 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 uh, on the other side, the, the, the guys tell me, uh, uh, I, I don't give you this, this, mm -hmm. uh, this MP3 if you don't uh, give me 
exchange. swap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exchange. yeah. No? Uh, what can you can can you offer? Uh, <laughs> I, I offer him a, <coughs> a other special MP3 ray or MP3. So it's it's very uh, special public. Well, we we have a very strong following, and as I say, it's like people we knew well, when I was young. So you know, they were like. 14 or 16 they're still friends and still coil fans so i think i don't know we 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 manage you know some people go away for a while come back and they'll find new music that we're doing different things so uh, but we do have a very very loyal and strong fan base and that they some of them are collectors and there's an awful lot of young americans and young europeans who just keep finding it you know so we're very grateful and happy this is the situation yeah. but we don't we don't really monitor who our audience are it's only when we play live that we actually you know get to smell and see and touch and whatever hopefully <laughs> yeah. It's very special audience. yeah 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 I ask something more about the production so how did you manage to to be really independent. So, uh, mm. uh, how how did I mean from from the how beginning? How is possible? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, By so many artists uh, are uh, persistence is all. Persist uh, again. It is the persistence is all. Yeah. But it's uh, it's also we 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 do know how to say no very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very important word in the in in language. No. No, will you do this? Will you do that? Uh, you think, okay, I should do, but no, we won't. You know, and it's only now we we decided to play live, or recently. Before we always said no, and this gave us the space to do the quieter music or something else. And I think you know, it's like if people ask you a question, you don't have to answer ever. If people ask you to do something, you don't have to do it. You only have to do what you feel is right, and we have. I think we have mostly done what we feel is right. I think peop a lot of people who start in the music business, when you're starting in the music business, you you you, you want to say yes to every opportunity mm. because you don't have very many opportunities. So, in in a way that we we said yes to uh, some bizarre label, which was um, in some ways it was good, but in other ways it was bad, you know. And and people who are just starting to make experimental music or electronic music sometimes may say yes to you know a, an offer or a deal or an opportunity that's actually going to be bad <coughs> for them yeah um, if if you you know it's it's more it's easier now than ever before to to sell music whether it's on the internet or by distributing mp3s or all you have to do is to have ideas that people will remember and recognize and feel feel are important and you have to just uh, you know get your name a little bit of public a little bit well known and so people will come to your website and that that's really all you need uh, apart from you know enough money to buy some the equipment if you need equipment or an instrument so it's 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 not it's i think it's much easier now than it was 20 years ago but it's also much easier for us because we've been working for 20 years to make it so that we have a name, you know, so people will come. Well, the, the, the choice to say yes or no is always uh, an open one and very important. But no, I expect it's something technical, but you mm. put on the spiritual, and I think it's the most important. People are frightened yeah. to say no. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, sort of soft politics. There's so much choice in the world you have to shut it most of it out if you want to get on with what you really have inside otherwise distraction is is you know your is the death you will suffer hmm which one many many yeah yeah we have uh, well we have an album in a sort of form number one you know it's it's finished but I'm not happy with it we're not really happy with it this is what was recorded for Trent Reznor and the Nothing label in America 
Uh, and it's, it's, it's old now. It's God, The it's problem is that we've been working on it for 10 years, off and on. Which is too long. <laughs> so it is, there are parts of it, there are some parts that, that we don't like. So we, But we hope to release that soon and to make it uh, relevant to how we feel today. And we have we have you know a, a five CD box set of Time Machines, which is Time Squared, Time Machines Squared, you know. So yeah, oh to the power of two. You know. uh, what else? We we have we have a yeah we we we're, we're going to do two DVDs. Possibly three. Possibly three. <laughs> we'll start with two. Is it a, a teamwork? Teamwork. teamwork. You mean between us all? Uh, yeah. Of course. You, you mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Are you working with uh, a lot of people? No. Uh, no. We, just, we do nearly everything that we can do ourselves. We do. <laughs> we do. Yeah. We do the. We do the music. We do the covers. We do the production. We do animation. Animation. Design. Filming. Website. Yeah, website. DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> Cooking, feeding the dogs, walking the dogs, gardening. We're working on a cookery book right now. We are, lit we are actually working on a cookery book, yeah. Um, yeah, well, recipes, you know, for, <laughs> for different dishes for, for food. We, we may give you some recipes. Mm. Italian. Oh, please do, yes. Yeah. But they, it, it's, it's a, oh, how to say it, it's a, it's a cookery book. It's in bad taste. It's also taste. not well. It's bad taste. It's it tastes good. But it's oh no, it's bad taste cookbook. No, <laughs> <laughs> tastes good, but <laughs> funny after. <laughs> but strange ideas. Strange, many strange ideas. Like mad, you know, proper magic in there. So some recipes will be, you have to prepare them when the moon is full, or they contain ingredients like human flesh, or. <laughs> squid ink or and you know like or gravel or gold or anything strange or you know with flowers. poisonous flowers or hallucinogenic no, 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 no. or edible flowers there's well, going to be you can have a new idea develop new ideas uh-huh but it, do you know it's you know it's all the all the ideas will be sort of irreverent you know the word Sort of disobedient. Yeah, disobedient. Exactly. It's the disobedient cookbook. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. No. Doctor Who fan. Doctor Who. I like Doctor Who. Con la schiena, strano. No, perché si vede quando sono strumenti. Ah, soffro, c'è più male. Ok, sì, like it. You, you try Italian food. Oh, I love it. I want, no, it's not Italian food. There's a cheese in Spain, isn't there, with maggots.